I'm long overdue switching to a new Visual Studio Code theme. There's so many great ones already out there, but there's nothing quite like putting your own personal touch on an IDE that you use every day. And it's really not hard to do. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your own theme in Visual Studio Code step by step and how to publish it to the marketplace. Most developers get hung up on how to choose different colors. So we're gonna overcome this by getting our inspiration from a scene from a film. I'm going to be using my favorite scene from The Empire Strikes Back. Whatever your feelings about Star Wars are the iconic carbonite chamber scene is visually impressive and it should give us some pretty sick color palettes to work with. Right, but this isn't a film channel, it's a coding channel. So let's get in some code. There's four steps to creating our theme. First, we're gonna be setting up our dev environment. Then we're going to be generating our template files. Then we're gonna design our theme and customize the template files to match our design. And then finally, we're gonna publish it to the marketplace. Step one, setting up our environment. So here we are in Visual Studio Code. I've already got a VS Code theme folder open and ready to go. A lot of what we're gonna be doing today is running our commands in the terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that Control Shift tilde. So the first thing we wanna do is check that we have Node.js installed on our system. We can check this by going Node-V. This will give us the version of Node.js running on the system. If it's not there, it's a really straightforward download. Next, we're going to install Yeoman Extension Generator. This is a scaffolding tool that we're gonna to use to generate all our boilerplate code and build our template files. npm install g yo generator dash code. Spits out a couple of warnings, but warnings are just there to be ignored, otherwise there would be errors. And that's our entire environment set up. Let's move on to generating our template files. So we're gonna run your code. Initially, you're prevented from executing scripts on the system, this is just a security thing. We can bypass this by changing our execution policy. Execution policy and bypass. Right, now we can try and run the your code a second time. Now that we bypass the permissions. And then we're gonna be greeted with this ASCII drawing over here and a list of options. We can go through the options by using the up and down arrow keys. We're gonna to go to new color theme and we want to start a new fresh one. Say no start fresh. So now we need to start setting some of the properties for our theme or our extension. Theme is just an extension for Visual Studio Code. So first of all, we need to give it a name. I'm going to give mine, uh, gonna call mine Carbonite Chamber Theme. Carbonite's Chamber Theme. The identifier, you can just use the default one it suggests. That's completely fine. And then a suitable description. I'm gonna leave that for later. Name of the theme shown to the user. It can be the same one, Carbonite Chamber Theme. That's totally fine. And then as far as a base theme, because this is Star Wars and we all love the dark side, I'm gonna go for the dark. Initialize Git repository. If we wanted to store our source code for this in a repo in GitHub, we could do that here. I'm not going to do this for the sake of uh, brevity. Right, and don't let the red text fool you. We've actually created our theme. We're looking at this line, extension Carbonite Chamber theme has been created. That's all great. And now it's giving us the, the option to open it open the code that it's generated. So if I hit enter, it's gonna open up a new instance of Visual Studio code. And these are the template files that have been created by the Yo code generator. So there's only one file we really care about at this stage, it's in the themes folder and it's our theme.json file. This brings us to the next step of our process where we want to start customizing our theme to match our design. So all the properties for a VS Code theme are stored in this theme.json file. It's a very long file. Uh, the colors are really broken up into two groups. We have the colors array and that stores all the colors for the IDE settings. So everything from the window to the scroll bar to the buttons to the icons on the side. Everything to do with the IDE itself is stored in the colors array. Then the token colors array holds all the properties and styling for the syntax highlighting. But the easiest way to see how this works is to actually run the theme. So we're gonna start this by debugging. You can hit F5 is run, start debugging, and we're going to have our running application here. So, so currently it's applying the theme based on the default values that's in this JSON file. I'm gonna put these two windows side by side so that we can 
see the changes live. It makes things a bit easier. So first we'll test out the IDE settings in the colors section. So I can go and change our editor background, for example, and we can go and pick a light blue. We can save it with Control S and our editor background will be changed to blue. Pretty awful blue, let's undo that. Save it again to revert it. There's not only these four properties, there are tons of different properties that can be set and they all can be found in the VS Code API. There'll be a link below for this, but everything from the drop down to inputs to buttons, scroll bars, badges. But then when it comes to the syntax highlighting, VS Code gives us a tool to inspect the elements that we're working with to find out which properties need to be set. To do this in our running application, open the command palette with Control Shift P and then go and find the inspect editor tokens and scopes tool. This gives us the functionality wherever we put our cursor. This will give us a pop-up giving us details about the element that has just been selected. What we're really looking for is this foreground property over here. So if I go and select this output element, for example, foreground is telling me that this is an entity.name.function. I can copy this and then go and search for that scope in our JSON document over here. And here we found the scope. If we go to the foreground setting, I can now and go and change. And let's say we wanted to change this to absolutely shocking pink. S, Control S to save that. You'll see now anytime we have a function call, it'll be changed to shocking pink. So while that works great for some fine tuning, it's not really practical for the literally hundreds of properties which we want to set. Luckily, there's a way better tool for that, which we're going to get to in a minute. First, let's move up to actually designing and choosing our colors that we're going to be using in our theme. So with this sort of thing, I want to start off by creating a bit of a mood board to get the feeling and vibe of that cool scene from Star Wars. So I'm going to start with a bit of a scrapbook tool. Here I'm using OneNote. Then I'll just start grabbing pictures from the film to try and get that mood that we're looking for. So this is a really good start for me. I'm already getting that feel of that. So even though it's just smoke and lots of lights, it really gives the, the effect that everything's on fire with that bright blue background uh, as well. Um, and this is already making me think that I, would, I want my overall theme to be orangey and red with some highlights in yellow, some highlights in blue. So uh, let's move over and, and start making our theme based on these colors. I'm going to take a snippet of this. So we're just going to use our snipping tool, going to grab this. Then we're going to move over to coolers. This is a fantastic tool that lets you generate palettes and colors that either work together or in our case from an image. There'll be a link below. We're going to start the generator. And we're going to say that we want to create palette from a photo. I'm going to drop our Star Wars collage in here. So then we have an option to target particular colors all over the um, all over the image and we can create a when we want to move on to our second color We can just select that we can create our palette as many colors as we want um, For this one, let's keep it simple I'm going to go with five or six and I definitely want to get some of the key areas. So we're going to start with oranges on this end I want to get some of that rich blue the gold we're seeing here is great, happy with that. Don't want any of the dark in there. Do want some more of the oranges, maybe some of the lighter area. Dark red, that's great, and even the browns. Want to keep the blue ready limited so that it stands out for, for when we want, but the idea is to have it mostly uh, reds and reds and oranges with a, with a bit of the blue. Okay, that's good enough for me. Let's go next. Save our palette, Carbonite palette. So the next tool we're gonna to move over to is Theme Studio for VS Code. And this is just the coolest thing ever, completely free. And this is gonna fast track our design completely. So we're just gonna go and create a new theme. 
obviously dark for the dark side. And this is pretty straightforward. We have all the possible things that we can adjust and change. And then here we have our preview window of what they're going to be like. So this is the point where it gets really fun and you can just start slapping colors together based on that color palette we created. I have another window where I can just pick and choose and see my hex codes, copy them over and use them wherever they're appropriate in the editor. So we're going to start with the editor, then move on to the syntax highlighting. Now that we're happy with the theme that we've generated in Theme Studio, download that, open that JSON file, select the whole contents, copy that, select our one, our theme that we're actually editing, and then overwrite that with the contents of the JSON file that we downloaded from the theme editor. So if I save this now, and I go to run and start this with debugging, you'll see now that we are now debugging and this is our carbonite chamber theme uh, based on the JSON file that we've just updated. Brilliant, so all that's left now is for us to publish our theme to the marketplace. This unfortunately is where it can get a little bit confusing if you don't keep your wits about you. First we need to navigate to Azure DevOps, we need to create an account with them and inside there we need to create an organization and then a personal access token. Then we need to move to the Visual Studio Marketplace where we're going to create a publisher. The reason we need to do this is because we need the publisher name that gets generated in the marketplace and we need the personal access token that gets generated from Azure DevOps. We need both of those together to be able to log into the marketplace and publish our extension or our theme. So once you've created an account with Azure DevOps and you've created an organization, you're going to need to create a personal access token. Go up here to the user settings and down to personal access tokens. Now we're just going to click on new token, going to give it a name. Choose our organization. We're going to set our expiry date to uh, a year in the future, which is the furthest we can go. And there's only one item we need to select here, which is the, we have to click all, show all scopes. And we're looking for the marketplace and we need to be able to manage the marketplace. We go create, we need to copy the access token to the clipboard and keep this. We're going to be using this in a second when we need to log into the marketplace. Now in a separate tab, let's go and navigate to the marketplace. Once you're signed in, hit the publish extensions and it's going to prompt you to create a publisher. The only thing that you need to enter here is the name of the publisher and take note of the ID. This is the second part of our login, which we're gonna use in a second. Once we have our publisher name and we've got our personal access token sitting on the clipboard, we can go back into Visual Studio Code. This no longer needs to be running. Next, we need to flesh out our manifest file, which is the package.json. These are just the settings related to the package itself. Some of these were set already by YoCode when we generated our template at the beginning. I'm gonna flesh some of these properties out. I'm gonna start by giving it a description. I'm going to specify the color of the gallery banner. This is in the marketplace. I'm gonna add some keywords to make it searchable. I'm also gonna add an icon to my project just to make it a bit feel a bit more complete. Here's my icon inside my package. We're going to just make a reference to where that icon resides. Everything we've done here is completely optional. The only thing you need to add to this that is absolutely compulsory is the publisher. And this publisher name needs to match the same one that we just created in the marketplace. Once we've done that, we can go and save. Then we're gonna open up the terminal. And this is where we're going to push our package or our theme now to the marketplace. First thing we need to do is to run the VS Code extension plugin. G, VS Code, 
VSCE stands for Visual Studio Code Extension. Once again, we're not worried about the warnings at all. And now we need to log in. So it's VSCE, log in, the name of your publisher. My situation, it's already telling me that it knows this, but if this is your first time, it'll just ask you to enter the personal access token. This is where you're gonna copy it from your clipboard. And there we go, we're logged in. Now all that's left is to build the package. It's telling us that we don't have a repository. This is because we said no when it asked us about a repository at the beginning. We're completely fine, we're gonna say yes to continue. It's telling us, warning we don't have a license. I don't care, it's completely free for the world to use. So I'm gonna say yes. And it's done, packaged, great. So our package has been built. Now, last thing we need to do is just to call the publish command, which will publish this to the marketplace. Once again, it tells me that I don't have a repository listed, and again, it tells me I don't have a license. I don't care. Warnings are not important. And there we go, done, published. Now, if we head over to the marketplace, still logged in, we can click on extensions, and we should see that it is currently verifying our theme that we're uploading to the marketplace. This takes a few minutes, go away and make a cup of coffee. And it's done. We got a green tick. We neither hit the three dots of viewer extension, but that's boring. Let's go to back to the marketplace. And now we can search for our theme and see if it's found it. And there it is up on the, the marketplace. So here's our marketplace view. This was the gallery color that we set in the background. We didn't set a markdown document, but that's easy enough to do. All that's left now is to install the theme. This brings it up in our Visual Studio Code. We can hit install, and there we have it. And it's as easy as that. If this tutorial helped you making your own theme, post the theme in the comments below. I'd love to check it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.